Today is about the power of you. You will change the world. You're listening to the Chronicles of Living Podcast. Do the damn thing. Where we talk to visionary dreamers like you about living their best life. Fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself. It's time to step into the past, present, and future with an open and healthy mind. Now let's talk. Greetings, 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 my visionary dreamers. How's everybody doing on Let's Talk Sunday? I'm going to get it out right now. Today's topic of the show is the fine, tight, court bottle of wine. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> to you newcomers out there, welcome, welcome, welcome to Chronicles of Living Podcast Show. I am Adion, your dream pusher, your lifeguard, saving you from yourself, the world, and some real bullshit. And I am a life purpose coach. I am a um, intuitive card reader, energy healer, podcaster, book author, all that good stuff. And you are listening to Chronicles of Living Podcast Show, the show for everyday people doing everyday things, living everyday life. You know, it's extraordinary folk doing a damn thing the best way we can. And I just thought I'd give you the topic at the beginning in case, uh, you, you know, you don't want to wait around. And I know that's kind of like, it's like a different type of title. You, you really don't know what I'm about to talk about, right? <laughs> I think I'm going to try to do that more often. <laughs> but yes, uh, the fine, tight cork bottle of wine. Um, to my, my veterans out there, thank you for always coming back. And uh, yeah, this show is just about us looking at different topics that we may face, that we've known people to face throughout our lifetime. Maybe we haven't faced it yet, but when it's facing you, you'll kind of get a little bit, have a little bit more insight on maybe how to handle it. So I'll just come on here and have a conversation with you, like your big sis, your auntie, your mama, your whatever, you know, your girl. Whatever you you need this conversation, whomever you need this conversation to come from, okay? Let's say it that way. Um, so that's what I do. Just shed some light and help us to look at the situations differently because this message is not just for me. It's for, I mean, not for you. <laughs> it is for me too. So let's get to it. Okay, the, the fine, tight court bottle of wine okay so this topic came about I, I i need to get permission from some of my uh sister friends or whoever i talk to because sometimes we'll be having some real deep conversations and you know they i'll be like at the end i'll be like damn that could have been a good podcast show and it's just be regular conversation so i was talking to one of my sister friends uh i think it was yesterday and um i was telling her about you know, where my journey is right now. And we both have a lot in common as into always having a bunch of ideas. We both have a lot, been blessed with a lot of talent and gifts. And so, you know, when you are blessed with, uh, more than one talent, <laughs> more than one gift, it could get a little confusing. It could get a little unorganized. And, you know, if you don't have like-minded people around you, it can be a little bit challenging to navigate as into what it is that you should focus on. You know, thank God I have crossed that bridge. I, I'll work on it every day. Um, I do have help from my son here that helps me out to stay focused because he's a Taurus <laughs> and I'm a Pisces. So I'm a dreamer and he's a logical person. So, um, yeah, um, but we were discussing all the, you know, the big things that we would like to accomplish. And I was telling her how, you know, we we definitely have to always be mindful that we are an individual. And so we can't conquer the world by ourselves. Um, but here recently, I felt like I was in a bit of a, a, a funk. I don't know if it was um, after, you know, I got sick or so or or if it was slightly before, but I was just kind of feeling a little stagnated, like, and 
I was encouraged by spirit to look over a couple of my um old videos one being I don't know if I shared this one last week I mean the last uh oh and I apologize for last week I was doing my son hair and it got past the time twist he got all these twists and thick hair so I apologize but um I was um basically I kind of lost my thought but basically I was talking about how you know sometimes you could just get so caught up because we all have this cap and this is what I've learned from uh, one of my mentors is we have a cap over us, you know? Um, and it depends on your, your family and your environment, right? So what I mean by this is that whatever you've been told or whatever you've heard throughout your young, your childhood, um, and maybe on to your adulthood until you kind of got out there on your own to kind of discover the world when you, by yourself you know if that's what you wish to do sometimes we just take what um our family and our environment um teach us or um show us and we just live by that period and we don't even go out and venture on our own to discover new uh things or have new adventures um learn about different um cultures and things of that nature on our own so for the people that and and even still because I've been out there venturing out there and learning about different cultures through all the moves I've I've had in my life though still if you do not break the I guess I'm gonna say family cap that's what spirit just gave me the family cap over your life you can have all the big dreams in the world. You can see all the the whole vision and you can even start on it. You can even complete it. But you may never get to that, the last part of that vision, the the biggest part of that vision. You may get, get it started. You may get midway through, but all of a sudden something happens that brings you to a halt. And I believe I shared this on one of my podcast shows before. I don't know which one, but, you know, um, it's, it's relevant right now. It's on my heart heavy. And I feel like going into the new year, this is something that needs, if I talked about it before, it needs to be talked about again so that you guys can, um, no, we all can look at our lives and kind of see where our cap is. So let me tell you what a cap is. So a cap is like, Say, for instance, you grew up in a household that you had parents or grandparents or whoever raised you that always said, um, say you went to the store and he's like, oh, no, don't look at nothing. We can't afford that. Oh, this is too expensive. Oh, um, money don't grow on trees. All of these different things that really kind of shape your mentality without you even knowing it. To make you believe that you're not valuable enough to surpass the cap of the family. You know what I mean? The the finances that were made from maybe, I don't know, the richest person in the family. And I was telling her how if we, if you don't really have like a, a millionaire, billionaire in your family, in your immediate family that you can kind of touch it even makes it more challenging for you to be that one in the family to break the cycle and to break the cap and to just flip that, that cork off that bottle. So, you know what I mean? And just, just be celebrated. So I use the fine cork, uh, tight cork bottle of wine as a metaphor, because as I was talking to her, I was talking, it just came out of nowhere. And I was like, you know, I was feeling like, I'm this bottle of wine, right, that has been aging for years. And all of these little grapes that went into this bottle of wine was all the different little projects that I created at some point in my life that just was fermenting in the bottle of wine, aging and and just being refined and all of that. But the cork was just so tight that the aging of the bottle just was taking longer than maybe what it should have been sitting on the shelf. Let's say it that way before somebody actually brought it, picked it up and 
pop that cork to celebrate all the juices that's in that bottle glass by glass you know what I mean that's how I was feeling you know thank God thank God I did some work on myself I did some energy healing um, different techniques on myself this last within this month I would say and um I've been doing some really deep meditating and I truly truly feel like that tight cork has popped off of this fine bottle of wine <laughs> and all the, the juices that's been formating formating I'm, I'm i'm saying the word wrong but anyway y'all know what i'm talking about that has been um fermenting thank you spirit for years all of the little project grapes that's been put in that bottle now now is ready to be exposed and ready to be celebrated with. So what I mean by that is as I meditated um, and I'm sharing my story with you guys, and especially for you newcomers out there, I share my story sometime or I might share somebody else's story just kind of so that you can kind of relate and think about something that you went through, say what is your fine bottle of wine that got the tight cork on it? What What is it that you have within you that has been longing to be celebrated? What type of projects, what type of visions and dreams that has been formating? Okay, I'm going to stop trying to say that word. Anyway, y'all know I said it right the first time, okay? I mean, a while ago. Anyway, that has been sitting in aging for all of these years and that has been push to the back of the shelf let's say it that way and it's just just been hidden what, what is it that you have so for me I have been cleaning out my attic right literally that's not a metaphor I have a huge attic and when we moved in um got the house just just through you know how it is you you find that room that you throw everything in when you move into a place and then you just get to the things as you have time so here it is about a year later, <laughs> a year and a half rather, and I'm going through all of these boxes and each time I go uh, clean out something, I find something that I had been searching for and I had um, found this journal that I wrote in in 2007 that talked about some of the things that I planned on accomplishing, one being the TV network and um, two being this uh, social media website that I had built back in 2011. But also, okay, that was the first thing that I found. I was so excited. I'm going through this book and I'm seeing all of this stuff and I'm seeing all my notes about this TV network and with me having a TV show, AD on Your Dream Pusher, um, it just, and, and knowing that I'm getting ready to move forward with the second season, it just like, wow, thank you, God, that I kind of went before myself and kind of wrote out my future and my future plans. And that's what journaling is all about. So I have all of these type of programs and ideas in the book that I wrote. So now, uh, yeah, AD on your dream pusher can never be boring. <laughs> I have so many ideas, but, but on top of that, uh, this past week, I had found this bag of different CDs and I had a storage at one time and one of my, uh, friends and I moved back to Philadelphia from Georgia said that she would, uh, take and hold on to some of my most important stuff, which I had my masters in there for some music that I recorded back way in the day. I had a record label and I had music in there. I had my masters in there. Well, long story short, she lost the storage, but didn't tell me until after it was too late. And I was so hurt. It was a lot of things in there that was important and dear to me. But, you know, I worked through the years and I let it go. Right. So I thought that was it. I would never hear none of my old music again. Well. Guys, my visionary dreamers, I have uncovered the treasure bag and I found all of my old music, right? And I was just like, let me play this stuff. Let me just see what's on here because some of them wasn't marked with the right stuff. It was just one set LP. I didn't know. And it was a bunch of CDs. So 
I started playing this music um, through my laptop and put my earphones on. And I was just like, wow. I mean, I went, I went back to that time of recording and putting all that work in. And, you know, and I started realizing the thought of the whole bottle of wine and the grapes just being crushed up and being aged. And I'm like, wow. I did a lot. I have accomplished a lot, but what is the reason that I continue to stop? Yes, I knew the reason that I gave. I knew that I stopped doing my music. Well, this was, now I'm realizing it was kind of like a, I want to say a protective or survival instinct excuse. I'm going to say it that way. I stopped my music to raise my son. Um, and he was like two and a half years old. So this is music from back in like 99, 2000, but it's music that still sounds great. Anyway, um, that was spirit way of getting me out of my funk. That was spirit's way of saying, you know what? You need to dust yourself off because you have so much more to give to the world and None of this stuff that you have created is going to go a void. You just have to find a way to see how you can utilize everything for your higher good so that it all makes sense. Now, let's get back to the cap. So the cap comes in when I said, um, there was a survival mode excuse. Cause yeah, maybe I could have still recorded and I did make a few attempts to record while I was raising my son, but I really between working and making sure I take care of my household and all of that and take care of him by myself, no child support and all of those things. I was just like, I really wanted him to have better than I had no, no, you know, no pun against my mom. My mom, you know, she, she was there for me. She raised me, my grandparents, you know, um, and I'm glad I, I am who I am and, and my childhood was the way it was because like I said, it created the person that I am now. Right. So, um, I realized that going back to the cap and knowing, and it's, I know that your loved ones don't mean it to your, for your harm. This is just what they're repeating from cycles that's what I have come to believe when you grow up and you know your family just repeat the same type of mentality the same type of cycle the same type of thought patterns and and um verbiage because that's what they heard when they were younger so now they're passing the baton to you to receive that same type of verbiage those same type of thoughts that same cap that they were given you know it's, it's a passing of the baton yo listen our family caps off at this amount and you are not allowed to pass go you are not allowed to make more than this to succeed past this goal and again, I know it is not meant, I don't believe it's meant, you know, in a harmful way. I just think that this is something that's normal, um, verbiage for our, our family, our environment and things of that nature. And so if we don't start going and surrounding ourselves with people that have a different type of verbiage as it, and they don't have a cap, you know, Maybe they grew up in a household that didn't have a cat. Maybe they were raised by parents that saw no limits. And don't get me wrong. Like I had a grandpa that always told me, oh, you could do whatever you want to do. Boo. It's, you know, might be a little bit more challenging, but I believe in you. You could, you could do whatever you want to do. But yet he also was a self-taught person, learned so much. Um, I've shared about my grandpa plenty of times. My grandma too, you know, she was encouraging my mom. She was supportive of my gifts, my talents. But again, if they work a certain job and make a certain amount and they retire with that amount and they don't go past that, no investments, no nothing else, but just the job 
um, pension and things of that nature. And they never took any other risks outside of that. That's what you believe your life is going to be too, subconsciously, subconsciously. Unless you go out of the rim, let's say it that way, you go past that cap and you go seek purposely to connect yourself with people that is living beyond what your family limits were, what your environment limits were. You get what I'm saying? And I did. I, I went on that mission. Last year, I hired a coach. Um, I've been hiring um, Russ Forfino is my coach. Oh, he's awesome. He has so many other, um, you know, coaches underneath him and stuff. So it's, um, it's been a journey and I really felt like, um, I cheated myself. I was cheating myself because I hired my coach last year, right? Is a bunch of a group of lovely people, millionaires. They making millions. They making hundreds of thousands a month, and all of this stuff. And I prayed for that. I meditated on that that I would find that tribe, and God led me to the right tribe, you know. And I'm grateful for it. But I realized that in order for me to get to the point that um, I can believe that I can truly take part in that tribe. I had to do some inner work on me. So a lot of times people, uh, you see these ads and people say, oh, make this amount of money and you're going to be rich and blah, 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 blah. If you don't do the work within yourself first, no matter how much money you pay for a coach, how much money you pay for a mentor, all of that stuff, you're not going to see it happen. The way you believe it could happen. The hype is going to die. You're going to have to keep on being fed. And I am a part of the Facebook group and all of that stuff. But I don't even check in because I feel like I needed to do some work within me. I realized that at first I was hyped and I, I, I was on a mission. I got everything done. I actually have everything done. My course, all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, I still had some inner work to do on me to believe in me. You know, because when you do so many different things and it never comes to full fruition, let's say it that way. It never comes to the point that the big vision, the big part of it that you envision. Then when it comes up that you are working on something else, what happens is that I can't, I can't remember what it's called within us, but it's a, uh, it's a survival. It's a, a part of us that's like, kind of like a survival, puts us in survival mode where it just naturally tells us like, no, no. Don't go past this. Don't do this. Don't because, you know, we're protecting you. You know what I mean? So basically, in my mind, it was kind of like we're protecting you from uh, disappointment. We're protecting you from failure or, or things of that nature where I don't feel like, you know, I'm a failure or anything like that. But the bottom line is still that is a form of you not even realizing where your subconscious is just because things don't go and flow the way you believed it should have flowed at that time does not mean it's not going to ever flow the way you envision it to flow. You just have to do the inner work and discover at what point that you receive that cap. At, you have to break through the cork. You have to, you know, unscrew that cork, that tight cork. So that that wine can just flow out of you into everybody's cup that it should flow into. Let's say it that way. Not everybody could, but the people's cup, like in my case, my clients' cups. You know what I'm saying? All my clients so that they could get more out of me. Like right now, yeah, they get a nice amount out of me and I'm blessed to be able to help, you know, my clients and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, I know that I have more to give. I know I have more to give. You know what I mean? And I'm 
I'm excited now because me finding my music and listening to it, it was a form of me remembering how powerful I am, how all the gifts, it just, everything just came back to me. And yeah, of course, like I said, you know, I do things, you know, and this is not, hopefully you take, take all the stuff that I say as encouragement and not bragging. Cause if you take it as bragging, then that's something that you need to fix within you. Cause that's the one thing that I love, love, love. Not one, one of many things that I love about my tribe with, um, the Russ Fofino camp is that everybody is so excited about everybody's accomplishments, no matter how big, how small everybody encourages each other and pushes each other and, and things of that nature. And this is the way it should be at all times in our lives. These are the people that we should be surrounded with. If we can't be surrounded with people that are excited about every new venture, rather we put it on pause, rather we go forth, rather, you know, whatever it is, if we can't, if we're not surrounded with those type of people, you need to check your camp and maybe it's time for you to let some folk go. And I don't mean let go, like, just be like, you know, kick rocks forever. Unless, unless they just really not for your higher good, but meaning like, you need to search out a new tribe. You know what I mean? And that don't mean, like I said, that you got to get rid of your old, but it's all about growth. It's all about growing. It's all about learning more about yourself. It's all about leveling up in this time, space, and reality. Because if we are remaining stagnant, then we not only cheat ourselves, but we're cheating all the people who are waiting and got their glass uh, waiting for you to pour your wine in. You get what I'm saying? So we got to be mindful of that. We have to be mindful of that. And my, my, um, my mentor, Jessie, I love her so much. Um, she really believed in me and I just feel like, you know, when certain people believe in you, it depends on the person. You get to that point that you like, dang, I don't want to let them down. But in reality, it's not that you're letting them down. You're letting yourself down. And when you push back and you look at yourself instead of looking at everybody else that you will let down if you don't move forward with whatever it is that you are setting out to do. And you really go deep within you to, like I said, to get rid of all the things that's keeping that that cap, that cork tight on your bottle, then and only then will you feel like, damn, I made myself proud. So it's like, once you make yourself proud, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter about anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we love to hear, you know, I'm proud of you. And I make it a point to tell different people that when they are uh, working through things, you know, I'm proud of you. I see you because we do. We do. I'm not going to say need, but a lot of us can use that type of encouragement, especially if it's coming from someone that really means and genuinely. So when I say it to people, I'm so genuine when I say it and I'm so hopeful that they receive it in that light and that they, it gives them that, that fuel that they need to to just move forward, you know? And and I just wanted to say their names because a lot of times I don't say people's names on the podcast because you know, if they was to ever listen to this podcast, I want them to know that their words and their, um, and Mark is one of the coaches too. Oh my gosh, fire, fire, fire. Like they just all are wonderful people, wonderful people. And every time I listen to a call, or listen to, you know, the zoom and all of this stuff, it just lights a fire under me. And then It goes down a little bit. So I had to get to the point and I'm like, like I said, guys, I'm telling y'all this story for you to look at you. What is it at what point that you feel that your fire might go a little low and that you feel that you might need somebody to ignite it again? 
we have to figure out those pivotal points so that when we feel it, we know how to heal it. I guess that's what I want to say. We we know why it's coming up. Figure out why is that coming up? Why is your, you know, your fire going a little low? What is it? Is it because of your age? Because that's what me and my sister friend was talking about. Like sometimes when you get a certain age, um, you know, we in a 50 club, but I was like, girl, we 50 to do 30, as they say, we to do 30, right? <laughs> and when you get to a certain age, sometimes if you start seeing other people your age that pretty much just gave up, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, well, I don't have a lot more in me and, you know, this is just this and I'm about to retire and yeah, there's no more life left in me. When you connect with those type of people, that can add to <laughs> your little light going down and starting to flicker. So what I've learned to do is surround myself with people if they're my age, they're just as driven as me. It, or either they might be a few years younger than me that still have that. But shoot, some of the people that's younger than me be acting like old people. Like they just <laughs> about to sit down and retire somewhere. So it really don't matter the age. It just matters the energy of that person. So what I need you all to do is just really check around and just think about your tribe. Think about your current tribe. Are they a tribe that, you know, you feel like you can top, you could pull the cork off your bottle and you can pour into their glass. You can share a toast with, are they those type of people, you know, or are they just people that are there in your life to let you, to remind you that, okay, this chapter of your life is good. Look at what you've learned from this chapter and it's time to write the next chapter. It's time for you to meet some new characters for your book so that you can sharpen you and you can continue to sharpen you and continue to sharpen your skill sets, your goals, your dreams. You can continue to write out your visions and make them become a reality. You get what I'm saying? So um, I think I'm uh, pretty much in this, but... I don't know, guys, this this podcast was just really the kind of, I don't know, for me to be a sounding board. No, not sounding board. That's not what I want to say. Um, what you call it? Not rant. Um, I don't know. Maybe just to get some things off my chest. I guess that's what it is. And to get you to start cleaning out your closet, cleaning out those boxes, cleaning out, uh, just different things that has been sitting in and just tucked away that you totally forgot about because maybe that might be the thing that you need to do to find what you need to find to reignite your fire. You get what I'm saying? Like you can go in your closet and, and see something that used to wear a lot your favorite jacket or something way back in the day not way back in the day I hope you don't got a whole lot of stuff from way back in the day but something that you wore to a special event that made you feel like you was on top of the world you might come across something like that as you are cleaning or a, a old picture book or something like that that you can sit and go through and start reminiscing of the times you was at your highest you was at your the your most I don't want to I guess say driven in driven energy let's say it that way I know that's kind of backwards the way I'm saying it but I, that's the way it came out guys okay but <laughs> you were at the height of your energy let's say it that way I think that sounds a little bit cleaner you were at the height of your energy so I challenge you this is a good way to do some house cleaning it is the end of the year uh, you probably need to do some house cleaning and organizing anyway, because Christmas is right here. And I don't know if you're going to have some family and friends over, but this is a good excuse for you to go ahead and get to clean it. Okay. And just, if you find some things that reignites your fire, take your journal out, take some out or your phone out and record the date. Record what you found, 
um, whether it be written or vocally, record what you found and record how it makes you feel and how is it that it it ignites a new fire to your goals, your dreams, your visions um, to help you to push forward. And what it is that you have been a planning to accomplish or what it is that you plan to accomplish years ago. And now all of a sudden you have the energy because you came across that certain thing, rather be that book or that, that jacket or whatever it is, um, that trophy, whatever that had you in the height of your life made you feel invincible made you feel powerful I just want you it's not I'm not trying to say okay if you you know got old trophies and you won a dance contest or something like that that you gotta get out there and be a dance contest that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is use that as an energy um fuel to help you to remember who you are, to remember how powerful you are, to remember your purpose in this time, space, and reality so that you can move forward. Even if you already are on fire, that's just going to just, uh, you know how you 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 have that fire on the grill and then you put that lighter fluid on it and just, it's just a whole big old flame come up. That's what it'll do to you if you're already on fire, if you're already, you know, um, ready to go. But I challenge you to start going through some things, rather be cleaning up your computer, cleaning up your emails. And sometimes you could come across a, a old email. I came across this. I don't know. Spirit had me look at this email last night and this email wasn't, I don't know what to call this email, but Spirit put it on my heart to go back. And look at this email. And this email was all the way from 2012. But I think that spirit wanted me to remind myself of a situation during that time. So that I can look at me. So that I can look at how I want to show up for myself moving forward. You get like... A lot of times, you know, we need to leave the past in the past, but sometimes we need to revisit the past just for, if it's for your higher good, you know what I'm saying? For a reminder of who we were in a good sense. Let's say it that way. A lot of times we need to leave the past in the past if it's something that's hurtful and it's not for our higher good, but it was something that we had uh, lessons to get out of it to learn. And even if you do come across that, um, let's take it as that. If you do come across some things as you dig in and you clean in and it's something that's not a great memory, why don't you just take that time to reflect on it and ask yourself, okay, where you were then versus where you are now. What have you learned about yourself? How have you grown? What, how much do you value yourself now? Um, or is it that you made it, you might have came across something that was in your past that didn't make you so feel so good just to remind you to value yourself more, to know your self worth and to get out of stagnancy and that you have more in you and you could do more for yourself. And maybe it's time to do more. It could show you a timeline on how stagnant you were and for how long you have been stuck in an energy that's not beneficial for your higher good. You get what I'm saying? And I think that that email kind of nailed the coffin for me and for a situation and just really let me know, like, man, Adion, you are an awesome person. You are an awesome person. You've always been an awesome person. And If anybody thinks differently, has any type of opinions that does not line up for the person that you have been showing up to be for yourself or for anybody, then it's their loss. Then that's on them. There's nothing you, that's not, there is nothing you can do about it. You get what I'm saying? And so moving forward in my life, I'm ready for to pop my cork that tight cork on my bottle of wine this 
fine bottle of wine and I'm ready to pour it out in different glasses that I know that are ready to celebrate me, ready to celebrate my dreams, my visions, my goals with me, and that we can share in in those visions and dreams and goals. And I can maybe help them and encourage them and motivate them to move forward in their dreams and their visions and their goals. I'm ready to celebrate with my tribe that is on this timeline that I'm on. You know, that's ready to move in this timeline with me. And that's it. That's where I'm at. And whoever is ready to move in this timeline with me and move in a great future. I just had an awesome dream. I took a nap because I knew I was going to do this podcast and I was up early walking and all that stuff. And I had the most awesome dream. I mean, it was very, very weird Then my son knocked on the door or whatever like that, but I'll just tell you the ending part of my dream and I, I got to really meditate on what this means, but the ending part of my dream, I was walking with a, a couple of people and it was like an underpath. I'm going to share this and I'm going to go. It was like this, I don't know, this underpath. Maybe it was like an underpath. Like, you know how you walk under a bridge or whatever like that. It was kind of like that. And it was like the ground was slightly damp. Right. Like maybe it was raining or something and it had stopped. And there was these three fish, colorful fish. They had stripes like a zebra, but the, the stripes were different colors, like a rainbow, you know, and, and these colors were vibrant. They weren't like, like regular colors here, you know, that we see. But they were very, very vibrant colors and they were different colors on the on the three fish. Right. And they were hovering over the ground. They weren't swimming in the water. They were like hovering over the ground and they they were hovering towards me. They came towards me and they just stopped. It was just looking at me. And I'm like digging in my pocket, like, oh my gosh, I got to take a picture of this. Nobody's going to believe this. Look, taking a picture for social media, (laughs) even in my dream, trying to get a picture for social media. But I want to take, I want to get my, my phone, but I had all this stuff in my pocket and I couldn't get to my phone. And by the time I was able to reach my phone, my son knocked on my door, (laughs) I woke up from the dream. (laughs) But I, I share that little part of my dream to say I'm still trying to dissect the dream and, and figure it out. But the point that these fish were, it was three fish. The number three is the number of spirit, is the number of the ascendant masters, is the number of creativity, is the number like it. Mm. And for it to be three fish, I'm a Pisces for one. Okay. <laughs> So I don't know if it signified something to, uh, for me to, um, as far as my dreams and my visions. Okay. Yes. The Pisces is a dreamer and just to move forward with it. And that my life is about to be real colorful. If I just continue to move forward and believe that's just what I'm getting right now. I don't know, but maybe I'm sharing that dream for just some inspiration for you guys out there, for you visionary dreamers to take and just to know. Just believe in yourself from this point on. If nobody else ever believed in you, if nobody else ever cheered for you, nobody else ever supported and encouraged you, take it from me and take my encouragement. And think about them three colorful fish telling you that it's your time. It is your time to pop that cork off your wine bottle. Let all them smashed up grapes, them smashed up projects and dreams and visions. Be ready to pour it out into the glasses of people that want to celebrate you, not tolerate you. But that's ready to celebrate you. That's ready to, you know, just be there for you. Be consistent for you. Show up for you. Those type of people from this point on, that is where I'm at in my life. I want to pour my wine in the glasses of those people that want that's ready to ride out with me, ready to be consistent with right now. I'm not saying, OK, we got to be on the phone every day. Not, I'm not That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people that I know I can rely on. Let's say that. 
Let's say that. Because I know that I have, I'm a friend that my friends call and I'm going to be there for them the best way I can, depending on my schedule. Let's say it that way. I'm always going to be there for them the best way I can. I'm going to share my knowledge with them. I'm going to share whatever wisdom I've collected along my path. Um, if I can't physically be there with them, I'm going to give them the best advice that I have from my experience. Let's say it that way. So I'm going to show up for them, you know, when they need me the best way I can. And so these are the people that I want in my life. And these are the people that you should want in your life as well, regardless of anything. Those are the people, that's the type of people that's going to ignite your fire and that's going to help you when you, when your fire is low, you can call on them and they're going to ignite your fire. That's the type of people that you should want to be connected with moving forward in your life. If that's not the type of people that you're connected with, that's where I'm at in my life. I want to be connected to people that when I got something on me and I need to talk to somebody they're going to be there for me. If they can't be there for me physically, they're going to be there for me as an ear or as a form of advice or things of that what uh that nature to just pour into me the way I would pour into them. And that's where we need to be, guys, moving into the new year. We need to connect ourselves. We need to level up and look at our current tribe and just see where we at. See see um if we need to add new people to our tribe so we could get new energy or if we need to rally up our tribe, if that's the type of tribe that can be rallied up. Cause some people are just, you know, they just cool where they at. They don't want to, they don't want to be rallied up. So you have to determine that and you have to know that where you place your energy, it is not going to come up a void. Let's say it that way. Okay, it's not going to come uh, that it's not going to be depleted. But as you pour out energy, your the people that you pour out to pours back into you. Let's say it that way. It needs to be like a balance, uh, at least energy, energetically. People might not be able to pour into the same way that you pour into them because we're all we all have different experiences and we are all at different levels in our lives. But energetically, energetically. People can do that. They can pour into you the same way you pour into them energetically. Yes, you might be a little bit hyper like me, but y'all guys, you, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So with all that being said, it's time to pop that cork off that bottle, guys. Don't wait into the new year, the countdown. Let's start working on it now. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm scrubbing all my stuff. I'm, I'm cleaning things up. I'm tying up loose ends with all the projects that I've, you know, that I'm on. That's, that's, you know, on this timeline, let's say it that way for me to complete. And, um, I'm excited. I'm excited more than I've ever been. And like I said, go ahead, go clean out your closet, go, go look through some photos, whatever you need to do. To remind yourself, as uh, my coach, uh, my mentor, Mark would say, get out and Jesse would say, get out your brag book or Russ Fafino, get out your brag book and start writing out the things you have accomplished in your life. Start writing out the things that um, made you feel good about yourself. Just write it out. Go take that trip down memory lane and and big yourself up, pat yourself on the back. So that you can have that fuel you need to move forward with what you're doing and what it is that you have been putting off and procrastinating about. Okay. So with all that being said, this is Adion, your dream pusher, your lifeguard, saving you from yourself, from the world, from some real boo shit. And you are listening to the Chronicles of Living podcast show, the show for everyday people doing everyday things, living everyday life. You know, it's extraordinary folk doing the damn thing the best way we can. I love, love, love you guys until hopefully next Sunday. <laughs> it's holidays are coming. I love you guys 
make sure you share, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. I really appreciate you. Go out and cop the books, Visionary Dreamer, 90 Day Journal, Transform Your Life, Discover Your Purpose Workbook on available Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, all online stores under April Adion Williams. I love you guys. Peace. The Chronicles of Living. We can be whatever we dream. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Chronicles of Living podcast, where you find only the highest vibrations. Remember, you are extraordinary. And if you're pursuing your dreams, we're proud of you. Because the best part of life is when you decide to live. Something better is always possible if you're willing to work for it and fight for it. Stay updated with Adion by visiting chroniclesofliving.com or stay connected through social media by following at Chronicles of Living. Until next time, your dream pusher, 80 on.